I don't trust OpenAI. I don't trust Sam Altman, I, and, I, and I don't think we want to have the most powerful AI in the world controlled by someone who is not trustworthy. Elon Musk recently sat down for a fascinating interview, shedding light on the future of artificial intelligence. It's been a while since we've heard his take on the subject, and this conversation did not disappoint. Today, I'm diving deep into what he revealed and breaking down some of the key insights from that discussion. One of the most striking moments was when Musk shared how quickly AI's capabilities have evolved over just the past year. His predictions for 2025? Well, they're both thrilling and a bit unsettling at the same time. There's a lot to unpack, and trust me, you're going to want to hear what he has to say about the road ahead for AI. I think at this point it's obvious to everyone that AI is advancing at a very rapid pace. Yes. Um, you can see it with the new capabilities that come out every month or every week, every week sometimes. You know, you, AI at this point can write a better essay than probably 90%, maybe 95% of all humans. Say so write an essay on any given subject. Um, AI right now can, can beat the vast majority of humans. Um, uh, if you say draw an image, draw a picture, um, it can draw, like, um, if you try to say mid-journey, mid which is the aesthetics of mid-journey are incredible, it will draw, it will create incredible images uh, that are better than again, like 90% of art is objectively the case. And it'll do it immediately, like 30 seconds later. We're also starting to see uh, AI movies. We start seeing you know, sh short films with AI, um, uh, AI music creation. Um, and the, the, the rate at which we're increasing AI compute is exponential, so hyper exponential. So there's dramatically more AI compute coming on online every every month. Um, you know, there seems to be roughly, I don't know, the, the amount of AI compute coming online is increasing at like, I don't know, roughly 500% a year, and like it's like that's likely to continue for several years. The, and then the sophistication of the uh, AI algorithms is also improving, so we're bringing online a massive amount of AI compute, and also improving the efficiency of the compute and and what the, and, and like what what the AI software can do. This next clip really caught my attention because it touches on a concept that many people might have missed when reading a document called situational awareness. Now, if you're unfamiliar with this. Situational Awareness is a PDF that sparked a lot of debate due to its bold claims about AI's future. One of the standout points it makes is that, as we move forward, we'll see multiple waves of acceleration in AI development driven by increased computing power and even more efficient algorithms. And this is exactly what Elon Musk was addressing in the interview. Now, I'm not saying Musk was specifically referring to that document, but he's definitely echoing similar ideas that experts have raised. Sure, some people have tried to debunk situational awareness, but when you look at the rapid efficiency gains and leaps in computing power we're seeing with AI systems, it's hard to ignore that we're heading in that direction. Before we dive any deeper, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe to AI Gridlock, and share this video with your friends for all the latest updates in the world of AI. So it's, it's, it's quantitative and qualitative in, in improvement. Um, so the, you know, I, I might, I think next year we'll, you'll be, be able to ask AI. So certainly by the end of next year, make a short movie about something, or you know, probably can do at least a 15-minute, you know, show or something like that. Um, Elon Musk dropped a pretty mind-blowing idea that you could soon ask AI to create a fully coherent 10 to 15 minute movie for you. And honestly, I believe we're not far off from that. There are already companies working toward this level of creativity with AI. It won't be long before we see high quality, AI-generated films becoming a reality. Just the other day, Meta unveiled MovieGen, which is impressive though currently quite expensive. But as efficiency improves and more computing power becomes available, I'm confident we'll see those costs drop. Now, in this next clip, Musk dives into the capabilities of Grok 3, touching on some of the projects he's currently developing. This is where things get really interesting. With now, if like optimization is probability of misgendering is zero, no, no humans, no misgendering. Problem solved. Now back to Arthur C. Clarke, who's exactly pretty prescient. Yes. So that's why I think the most important thing is to have a maximally truth-seeking AI. That's why I started XAI, and that's our goal with Grok. Um, now, people will point out cases where Grok gets it wrong, but we try to correct it as quickly as possible. In case you didn't know, Grok is Elon Musk's latest chatbot developed with Xi. And here's where things get interesting. Musk made a bold statement, claiming he hopes Grok will be the best AI model by the end of the year. Now. Whether or not that happens remains to be seen. 
The competition is fierce with upcoming heavyweights like Gemini 2, Claude 3.5, Opus, and possibly Google's Orion or GPT-5 all in the race. This next clip is particularly intriguing because Musk touches on superintelligent AI and the risks associated with it. He's been sounding the alarm on this topic for years, all the way back to 2014. In fact, one of the main reasons he founded OpenAI was to ensure transparency and safety by keeping AI open source. But now we're in a landscape where many companies are developing closed source models. Musk points out that superintelligent AI poses an incredibly complex problem, one that's difficult to control, and the stakes are higher than ever. Is there uh, any way, I guess, to set limits on the decisions that machines can make that affect human lives and make certain that there's some trigger in the system that inserts a human being into the decision-making process. The reality of what's happening, uh, whether one likes it or not, um, is that we're, we're building super-intelligent AIs, hyper, like hyper-intelligent, yeah. like intelligent, more intelligent than we can comprehend. Yes. I would liken this to like, let's say you have a child that is a super genius child that, that you know it's going to be much smarter than you then well what can you do you, you can instill good values in how you raise that child so yes. even though you know it's going to be far smarter than you um, you can make sure it's got good values philanthropic values um, good morals you know honest uh, you know productive that kind of thing controlling at the end of the day, I, I don't know if, I don't think we'll be able to control it. Uh, so I think the best we can do is make sure it grows up well. So yeah, the reality is controlling a super intelligent AI is practically impossible. Our only hope is that it aligns with human values and operates within what's morally acceptable. That's a huge challenge and Elon Musk doesn't shy away from addressing it. In fact, this is where Musk introduces his concept of P-Doom or the percentage chance that superintelligent AI could lead to the end of humanity. Now, it's not as high as you might fear, but it's also far from comforting, especially when you realize the stakes. This is about the potential extinction of every person on Earth. Uh, so I think the best we can do is make sure it grows up well. You've been saying that for a long time. Yes, I've been saying it for a long time. Yes. Are you still as worried about it as you seem to be two years ago when I asked you about it? Well, I, I think that like, my guess is like, look, it's 80% it's, it's likely to be good, maybe 90. Um, so you can look, think of the glass as 80% full. Um, it's, it's probably going to be, it's probably going to be great. But there's some chance of annihilation. And you'd say the chance of annihilation is 20%? 10 to 20%, something like that. Now, this is where things get really interesting. Elon Musk dives into his thoughts on Sam Altman and OpenAI. And let's just say, he doesn't hold back. Some of his comments are bound to stir up the AI community. But it's important to remember that Musk was actually the one who founded OpenAI not just a few years ago, but quite a while back. Since then, the original mission of OpenAI has shifted dramatically, and Musk isn't exactly thrilled about the direction it's taken. His frustration is clear, and it adds an extra layer of tension to the current AI landscape. And you say the chance of annihilation is 20%? 10 to 20%, something like that. How concerned is Sam Altman about annihilation, do you think? I think, in reality, he's not concerned about it. I don't trust open AI. I mean, I, you know, I started that company as a non-profit open source. Yes. The open and open AI, I named, a comp I named the company. Yeah. Open AI as an open source. But, um, and it is uh, now extremely closed source and, and, ma and, and maximizing profit. So, does risking I, I don't understand how you actually go from being a an open source nonprofit to a closed source for maximum profit organization. I'm missing. Well, I mean, but I, Sam I, Altman I'm, got rich, miss, though, didn't he? At various points, he's claimed not to, to, to be getting rich, but he's claimed many things that were false. Um, and now apparently he's going to get ten billion dollars of stock or something like that. So. Um, I don't trust Sam Altman, and I, and, I, and I don't think we want to have the most powerful AI in the world controlled by someone who is not trustworthy. And sorry, I just don't. I mean, but that, you know. that seems like a fair concern. Yeah, but but you don't think, as someone who knows him and has dealt with him, that he is worried about the possibility this could get out of control and hurt people. He will say those words. This is where Elon Musk dives into some fascinating territory, how super-intelligent AI could actually outsmart us in ways we can't even comprehend. It's a bit like chess. There was a time when humans were unbeatable, 
but now AI dominates the game at a near godlike level. What's even more mind-blowing is that sometimes AI makes what seems like a blunder only to pull off a move that leads to a checkmate you never saw coming. If AI did, if it became clear to the rest of us that it was out of control and posed a threat to humanity, would there be any way to stop it? I hope so. Um, I mean, if you have multiple AIs and ones that are, hopefully you have the AIs that are pro-human be stronger than the AIs that are not. Battle of the AIs. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that that is how it is with, say, chess these days. The, the um, like the AI chess programs are, so, are vastly better than any human, um, and incomprehensibly better. Meaning, like we can't even understand why it made that move. <laughs> right. we why they're so why, good. Right. Yeah. We, don't, we don't even know why it made it. What, it'll make the move. We don't even know why it made the move. Um, and in fact, some of the moves will seem like blunders, but then turn out to checkmate. Um, and for, for, you know, for, for a while there, there was there was some uh, uh, the, like the best human chess players with the best computers could beat uh, just a computer, and then. It got to the point where if you added a human, it, it just made everything work. And then it was just AI, it's just computer programs versus computer program. Um, that's, that's where things are headed in general. And then of course, there's the idea of AI and retirement, one of the most intriguing topics, in my opinion. It's something I constantly find myself debating, especially when thinking about how society will function after the arrival of AGI or super intelligence. How will jobs change? How will the economy adapt? These are huge questions. Concepts like universal basic income UBI and post-AGI economics are already being tossed around as potential solutions. Elon Musk, in his usual subtle way, touches on these ideas, offering a refreshing perspective on how the future might unfold. Make sure we instill good values in the AI. What's everyone going to do for a living? I mean, in a benign AI scenario, that is probably the biggest challenge is how do you find meaning if AI is better than you at everything? Um, that's the benign scenario. That's the good news? Well, yeah, but I guess you know, for, for a lot of people like the idea of retiring and... Really? Are you, are you looking forward to it? <laughs> no, not me. I, I'd like to hope... Uh, I'd like to think that I... I'd like to be do, do useful things. Um, Don't you think it's a universal desire? It's, 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 not, it's not universal in that the, there are certainly... I know many people who prefer to be retired. That they prefer to um, sort of have not have responsibilities and engage in, in leisure activity. And, I mean, we, and we're on the cusp of, of this. It's, now, interestingly enough, Elon Musk wraps up by diving into the tricky topic of AI regulation. It's a bit of a minefield. Take the SB 1047 bill, for example, a piece of legislation that sparked a lot of controversy. Some people argue that it'll stifle AI development, while others believe it strikes the right balance. Personally, I lean slightly in favor of it. It's not as extreme as some fear and we could have seen much worse regulations. I won't bore you with all the details, but it seems to offer just enough safety measures to be effective. What's fascinating, though, is Musk's reflections on predictions he made years ago, some of which are now becoming reality. Back then, the government didn't take them seriously, and now we're seeing those warnings come to life. But with AI tools like ChatGPT creating a new level of global awareness about AI's power, I'm hopeful that we'll finally see thoughtful regulation that aligns with how AI will shape our future. Meaningfully regulating AI, which will eliminate like the purpose for most people's lives and could kill us all, it's a little weird. Yeah, I think we should have some... some <laughs> but why some, don't we, I some, guess? Something above nothing. <laughs> In that range? Yeah. But why don't we? I don't know. Um, you know, I, I all the way back, like, I, 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 I during the Obama presidency, um, I, 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 you know, I met with Obama many times, but usually in like group settings. The one one-on-one -on -one meeting I had with Obama in the Oval Office, I said, "Look, the one thing that we really need to do is set up an, at the beginnings of an AI regulatory agency, and it can start with insight, where you don't you don't, you don't just come shooting from the hip, throwing out regulations. You just start with insight, where you, the the AI regulatory committee uh, simply." goes in to understand what all the companies are doing, and then proposes rules that all the AI companies agree to follow, just like you know, sports teams in the NFL, you, know, you have proposed rules for football that everyone agrees to follow, that make the game better. You know? So that, that's the way to do it. Um, but nothing came of it. What did he say when you said that to him? I mean, he seemed to like kind of agree, but, but also people didn't realize what, what, what the, where AI was headed. That that's exactly why Elon Musk points out that many people didn't fully grasp where AI was headed. And honestly, if you'd asked me four or five years ago, I probably wouldn't have seen it coming either. The pace of AI development has been nothing short of astounding, and it's only now that we're starting to realize just how transformative it's going to be. 
at that time. You know, so AI seemed like some super futuristic yeah, for thing. sure sci-fi basically so I'm like I'm telling you this is gonna be smarter than the smartest human and um, my predictions are coming absolutely true and uh, so we need to have some insight here just to make, you know, make sure that this companies aren't cutting corners um, doing dangerous things but it, it, Google kind of con controlled the the White House at that time and, and they, they, they did not want any regulatory well that's it I mean you never see politicians turn down opportunities so what do you make of Elon Musk's thoughts on AI it's pretty interesting, right? Especially since he's been deeply involved in the tech world for years. I found this interview really eye-opening, especially as we're racing toward a future shaped by AI. I'd love to hear what you think. Drop your comments below and let's keep the conversation going.